welcome back to part two of this video series. In this one, we're going to be spawning objects and using the instantiate. So by the end of the video, we'll have something that looks a little bit like this. All right, let's start by making a prefab for the laser that we're going to actually shoot. So I'm going to make a new scene for that, just like we've done before. Uh, last time we made an area 2D and we're going to do the same thing here. So this is an area 2D top level. Um, this is great for detecting collisions and the laser is going to need that. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to call this one uh, laser and then just add the parts that I need. The exclamation mark shows you what it is that you have to do. So obviously we need some sort of sprite. So I'm going to add a child node of sprite 2D and I'm going to add in the sprite that I want. I'm just going to choose the drop down here and do load so I can find it with a decent look. So into the PNGs for this Kenny assets that I've um, showed you in the last video, go to lasers and I'm just going to choose this blue one. That's fine. And just click open. You'll notice it's also pointing the wrong way, just like the player was. So all I'm going to do is in the transform, turn that by 90 degrees, just like I did. And in the with the ship as well. I made the ship 0.5% scale. So it's pretty small right now, but um, it is there. The uh, exclamation mark is obviously still there too. So the next thing it also need is its collision shape. Now um, it's approximately rectangular. So I'm just going to go with a rectangular shape and just drag that to be approximately what I want for the um, the laser and that's uh, it's going to be quite big. I put snapping on there just so I could see the grid. Um, when you put snapping on it usually automatically um, snaps to the grid um, but it doesn't matter I'm just gonna maybe move it down a little bit so that it's not quite so big and um, then because it's still unsaved I'm going to save that in my prefabs folder so the player is already there now the laser is going to be there. If we put a laser on our scene right now, we'll see that it's kind of boring. So if I just drag one and drop it down onto my scene and then we play the game, um, we'll see that the laser doesn't do anything. We're not told it to do anything, so I didn't expect it to do anything else. So we need to make this move forward um, in the positive X direction. And for that, we'd probably the best thing to do is just give it a script. So I've got the laser scene open. Um, I'm going to click on the laser and I'm just going to hit this plus for adding a script. The laser name is okay but the location is wrong so I'm just going to hit that little browse, click up, go into scripts so I can put all my scripts in the same place and um, add it into there so create it in there. So the only thing that it really needs to do is it needs to move forward and it needs to move forward every frame so that's why we're going to do it inside this um, process function. So it's pretty simple, um, just like when we were moving the player, we just say position um, and we want the X position to be equal to itself plus some value. Now the player moves at a speed of 10, so I reckon they should move maybe at a speed of 30. That might be a bit too fast, but the only way to find out is to see. So I've got one on my on my game scene already. So when I play, this bullet should, the laser should shoot off. And 30 is maybe a little bit too fast, so I might maybe make that. Um, 25, save that and play it again. Now to stop us having to do this every time, what's really cool is you can do this at export um, variable uh, at the very top. So just by, I mean, let's do it this way. So if we just create a variable called speed and we make it equal to 25, um, what that's done is it's put this variable up the top. So anytime I need it, I can use it by just referring to it as the variable name. So this will be replaced by the value of 25. Um, this doesn't really help us particularly. Um, if we see the laser over here, it doesn't we, we can't change the value over here, but we can if we do this at export. If we just use this little decorator, they call them, this at export. I saved this scene um, the script here and you'll see that now on the laser, so this is the laser scene, they'll see that there's a speed value is already um, set up over here. Now all you need to do is um, you can change this in the editor without having to do anything else. So this is quite good if you've got something that you're going to tweak all the time like like the speed of a variable or the power of a car or something like that. And that way you can always do it without having to go into the code, not that it's very complex code. So. That's great. We have uh, kind of what we want. We've got the uh, laser, but we've not got 
the flare shooting the laser. And we're going to start with the simplest possible way, and we're literally just going to add some code to the player itself. And we're going to instantiate, in other words, create these prefabs, um, these laser prefabs in code. The first thing I want to do, obviously, is to get some sort of key press. So in the project settings again, and in the input map, I'm going to add a new input map um, action. Um, I'm keeping the same convention, so player underscore. I'm going to say player shoot. So there's my new um, action. Hit the plus here, and then the space bar so that it maps that to the space bar so that we've got the player shoot action ready to go. So I'm going to remove this from the actual scene hierarchy um, because I've got it down here in my prefabs folder. And I'm going to show you just right now how we can get the player to, um, to instantiate those objects. So I'm going to go up to the player and um, just go back to the player script. The way that we instantiate is firstly we'll need a reference to the object that we'd like to instantiate. So the way you do that is um, we do this at on ready so that this happens once the, the game has loaded. Um, so when this object is loaded and then we create a variable to store it. And my convention, the one I like to do is to call it um, laser prefab. And then you can make it equal to, and what we're doing with this preload function is we're loading it as the game loads up. It's going to preload the value the the thing, the scene that it needs to create when we call the instantiate in the main code here. So the preload uh, is quite helpful because it comes up with all of the things that we could potentially preload. Um, I know that mine's is called laser, so if I start typing laser, I can see that the laser TSCN, that means the scene um, in the prefabs folder, that's the one that I want. So I'll just use the up and down arrow to find the one I want and then press enter and it confirms. This will preload this so that later on in code, whenever I want to, I can instantiate a new one. And we make a new one um, by the instantiate function. So we'll just do a check again. So we'll say if input dot is action just pressed. Now the is action just pressed will happen um, once a frame, but you'll need to let go of the key again and then it will sort of like reset itself so you can press it again. If you did is action press, then while the key is down, just like with the directions, it would fire every single frame. And that would be hilarious, but it would definitely not be a very good game because it'd be very easy to win. So this is action just pressed is the one that I want. And then I wanted to just find the player shoot um, command here, action there. So. This is the, the if statement. Uh, what we do is we make a laser. Um, the make a laser is pretty simple. So we called our laser prefab, laser prefab. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say laser prefab dot instantiate. Now that will make us a laser prefab. If you notice that this returns a node, the why it returns a nose is because we're going to need to store it because we might need to change its position and its rotation and give it some values. So we do that by just saying var laser. This creates a temporary laser placeholder, um, instantiates one of these scenes into that temporary placeholder. And then all we need to do to display it is to, well, we'll need to give it a position and then we'll need to add it to the tree. So adding it to... Uh, Given it the position is easy. We just say laser.position. Um, that didn't work very well. So laser.position equals position. So the laser's position equals the position of this object that has this script, which is the player. So it should put it in the same position as the player. And then we add it to the tree. So I'm going to do this the wrong way. And I'll show you the problem. And then we'll go and do it the right way. So to add it to the tree, we say add child, and then we say laser, because that's the object that we added. Now, um, if I test this, you will see that there's a minor problem. So um, we can go up and down, and I hit the space, and you'll see that it's kind of randomly appearing. And worse than that, when I go, um, when I move my player, the 
laser also moves, so it's become a child of the player. Now there's a ton of complicated ways that we can do this. We could make the main game uh, fire the lasers and then we tell it where the player is and that's where they appear. The simplest way that I saw quite recently is uh, is actually quite smart. So all we do is um, we use the get parent. So we um, get underscore parent. We'll get the parent of this object. Um, and then it will add a child, which is the laser. So I'll explain what's happening if I go back to the game here. Um, when the player fires a bullet, um, fires a laser, it would normally become a child of the player. So let me just explain. If I put a laser on as a child of the player, um, you'll see it's kind of like hidden under there. I might just, so we can see it, I'll just move it over just a touch there. Um, so we can see. So the by adding the child, um, when I move the player around, you'll see that the laser also moves around. So this um, instantiate and then add child, that's what it does. But if we use the get parent, what we're effectively doing is we're getting the game from the player and then we're adding the laser as a child of the game rather than as a child of the player. So now when I move the, if I can select the player, if I move the player around, you'll see that the laser doesn't move around with the player. And that's effectively what we were doing in code by doing that line of code um, down here. Uh, by this line of code, the get parent add child, that just adds it to the game rather than adding it to the player. So when we test this, you'll see that it should work as expected. So hitting the space bar, I'm moving around and I'm firing the lasers and they're all shooting off to the right. Every time I press the space bar, I get another laser from exactly the position of the player. And it's not a child of the player, it's a child of the main game. So that's the win.